and welcome to a new video. In this video, I want to highlight all the things I do in RuneScape, ever since I maxed my account. You can use this video as a guide on what you should be doing after maxing, and also some tips on the best ways to play the game. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. The first thing I want to cover in this video is my favourite way to train prayer after 99. By heading into the deep wilderness, you can find Lava Dragons in the Lava Dragon Isle. These guys are amazing for prayer experience because the bones that they drop can be buried for a whopping 85 experience per bone. That's nearly 6 times the XP you get per big bone. This changes everything. Just make sure you don't get PK'd before burying them. Another great thing about killing lava dragons is that once you get the looting bag as a drop, you can shove all of your stuff inside it. And if we look here, we'll see all the drops that we got. And then you can go ahead and just destroy the bag. And you... Wait. Wait, what? Where are my items? Oh, maybe they went straight in my bank. They must have gone straight in the bank. But yeah, so you get the looting bag and you can get all your items back to the bank. Nice and easy. So my next piece of advice is the giant mole. This content is great for farming and killing the boss is super easy. I've heard Darax is really good here, but I can't really seem to hit very high. You can try it out for yourself and see how it goes, but me personally, I prefer magic. The only frustrating part about the giant mole is having to find it every time it digs. This can take a lot of running around and get, can get quite annoying. You might want to bring energy potions. When you finally do get the kill, we're going to get ourselves a Mole Claw, Mole Skin. And that is very nice, because that is the drop that we need. And if you're like me, and you're unlucky enough to accidentally get a random during it, you may get a Genie Lamp. Don't worry, we can go ahead and destroy this, because we don't need this. It is fairly useless. The best part about killing the Giant Mole, though, is trading in these Mole Claws and Mole Skins to Weiss and the Gardener over here. Let's take the Birds Nests. And there we go. We can open these up. Get ourselves some seeds. Very nice, very nice. And then we just drop the nest because they're useless. And there we go. We've got some teak seed. Uh, we've got acorn and we have a mahogany seed. Nice for farming. This changes everything. So if you're like me and you love training Slayer, you may occasionally come across one of these. This is a long bone. It gives slightly more XP than a big bone by giving 15.1 XP instead of the standard 15 from a big bone. So if you happen to come across one of these while training Slayer, you can always go ahead and bury it. And there we go, bury the long boat, and there we go. That's 15.1 prayer XP that I wouldn't have had if I'd left it on the floor. Good to know. This changes everything. Another quick tip for you, if you find yourself running around without energy and you don't have any energy potions on you, don't fret, you can also eat a gout tuber to heal 50 energy while running. Continuing on from Slayer, if you find yourself fighting an opponent that could deal quite a bit of damage, but you don't want to waste prayer potions, you can always prayer flick. Prayer flicking is the act of turning your prayer on and off at the right times to stop the damage from hitting you and yet not using prayer. In this example, just make sure that you're turning on the prayer as the enemy hits you and that way you won't take any damage. As you can see in the background, I do get hit here, but it must just be a bug in the game or something. I'm not really sure what's happening. Now, I know I said earlier that one of my favourite ways to train prayer was to go to the Lava Dragon Isle, but if you're not feeling like running into the wilderness, which I can understand, there is another way you can do this. If you have just 92 magic, you can actually use a spell called Sinister Offering, which gives you prayer XP with the bones that you use. So, we're going to stand here, and we are going to do ourselves some prayer training with this. And we're getting ourselves 396 XP per cast. Pretty nice. This changes everything. So now I'm feeling like killing some Calphite Queen, a very old boss that I've always enjoyed killing. So we're just going to make sure that nobody's inside here. Sweet, there's no one in here. Let's go in, try not to get poisoned. And we're going to go ahead and take on the Calphite Queen. Now you've got to make sure you bring plenty of, plenty of supplies for this because KQ can do a lot of damage. And um, I've got myself plenty of supplies here. We've got some brews and restores. You've got to remember to go for the 3 to 1 ratio. Like, there we go. I can see the exact point that I'm making about the uh, the damage. Um, just need to make sure that we're fully healed. We need to drink 3 doses of restore to every single dose of brew. Because otherwise our stats are going to plummet and we won't be able to do any damage at all. If you're unlucky like me, you might sit here for a while not hitting anything, but don't worry, you will eventually get the damage off. As you can see here, I'm getting a few hits, and uh, I haven't taken too much damage since then, I guess. KQ is using a lot of range, and I am praying range, so we can deal with that. We've only got uh, three and a half brews left, and plenty of restores to cover off the, uh, the stat reduction. And last of all is my cooking method. If you see here, we've got ourselves some grapes and some jugs of water. Basically, all we're going to do is put a grape into the jug of water. We're going to wait for it 
for it to ferment, and that's going to give us some cooking XP. You do have to wait a little while per jug, but I believe it is 200 XP every single time you do. So if you don't mind waiting around a bit, you can get some decent XP. There we go, 200 XP, and then we'll do the next one. And basically, we're just going to do this, wait for this to ferment, and then do the next one. And um, yeah, that's going to be the way I train cooking. Uh, I'm currently just over 99. I haven't really done much of it. Uh, I am going to go for 200 mil in the next couple of weeks doing this. So it should be qu pretty quick. Uh, it, is, it is nice and fast, and it's also pretty cheap as well. So I don't mind doing it. And that's going to just about wrap up this video. I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope it has helped. If this video has helped you in any way, shape, or form, please hit that like button and let me know in the comments which part was your favorite and which of these tips is going to help you the most after maxing your account. Just remember, you don't actually have to max your account to do this stuff. This is just the kind of stuff that I did post-maxing to get extra XP and work towards 200 mils, which I will be clearing up soon. As I've mentioned earlier on, I want to go for 200 mil cooking. I'm going to use the wine method to do that, as it is pretty quick and pretty cheap. But with all that said, I'm going to end off this video here. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video. Take care.